Tucker Carlson announced uh, on Twitter that he's over in Moscow. Let's roll a little bit of Tucker here. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances. And the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the US dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English-speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they've done scores of interviews with the Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda, propaganda of the ugliest kind. We are not encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview, but we are urging you to watch it. You should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. So the news that Tucker was in Moscow <laughs> was greeted uh, with, let's say, what, what's the right word for this? Rage uh, in some and corners scoffing. of the media. Scoffing in some corners of the media. Not entirely surprising. It should be noted that NBC News, as recently as a few years ago, had done an interview with Vladimir Putin. Here's a flavor of what uh, some folks in the media had to say about Tucker's trip to Russia. Carlson is now just another far-right conspiracy peddler with a show on the Internet. He's no longer on Fox, as we all know. And he's apparently been spending the last few days in Moscow for some reason. Who knows? We don't know why. He has to stay relevant somehow. So I guess we'll learn in the coming days. Maybe. Yeah, well, when I first heard that he was there, I just assumed he was there to get an award because there probably isn't an American who has done more for Vladimir Putin in the last couple of years than Tucker Carlson. He's been uh, he sided with Russia on the invasion. He was consistently uh, berating Vladimir uh, Zelensky and uh and and uh, lifting up Putin. So that's how he got the interview. And I think Putin's expecting a friendly interview. You know, Putin uh, actually uh, uh, order the Kremlin did state TV to cover T Tucker and to carry some of Tucker's comments because they viewed them as so helpful to Putin in this war effort. So I'm sure they'll have a warm uh, a warm session, whether it's an award or a or a, uh, I, I guess the interview would be his award, it, reward. The, the meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society um, over in Moscow Indeed. there. No, oh, that was a little smug. Erin uh, Burnett also criticized Tucker for basically being, or, or she she highlighted, let's say, the state TV coverage of Tucker's visit to Moscow and previous coverage of uh, Tucker and his comments on the Ukraine war as a sort of criticism of him going over to interview Putin. Here's Christian Amanpour. We can put this element up on the screen. Uh, does Tucker really think we journalists haven't been trying to interview President Putin every day since this full-scale invasion of Ukraine? It's absurd. We'll continue to ask for an interview, just as we have for years now, because in that video, it's about five minutes long, we just played a clip of it, uh, Tucker explains that he, one of the reasons he goes over there is, or one of the reasons he went over there is because he doesn't feel as though Putin has has gotten any, uh, he's got, that he's given any access to Western journalists because in his, his contention is that Western journalists have basically not tried to interview Putin. They've made up their mind about Putin. What do you make of that, Ryan? I mean, I think uh, Christina Amanpour is one of the few that can credibly push back on that claim. She would absolutely be happy to interview Putin. And I think anybody out there who is uh, critical of the concept 
of Tucker Carlson interviewing Putin should consider those Amanpour comments. Amanpour would be, would be eager to mm -hmm. uh, inter interview him. I think the question becomes, how does he do the interview? Mm -hmm. And he's under a lot of pressure to do a serious, hard-hitting interview. A and I hope that he does, because I that's the kind of interview the, the world need needs to see. I think there's a chance he will do that because he treated this one differently than he has treated previous ones. In mm -hmm. other words, though, so he previously interviewed Andrew Tate, <laughs> and that was a softball interview. Mm -hmm. um, I defended the concept yes. of interviewing Andrew Tate, but giving him a softball interview, I, that, that I don't defend. Yes. He did not explain ahead of time defend, or defend the decision to interview Andrew Tate like he just did. He just put this preemptive self-defense of his decision to interview Vladimir Putin. And so he understands the pressure he's under there. Mm. So if he understands the pressure he's under and he still gives a softball interview, uh, I think that'll be an interesting call on, on his part to make. Uh, but the, so the question should never be, do you interview a, yeah. a public figure? It's how you do the interview. You know, uh, CNN's Peter Bergen famously uh, made his career by getting an interview with Osama bin Laden in a cave. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a phenomenon at the time when he did it. It was, this is 1997, so it was before September 11th. But people, in the know, still understood Osama bin Laden to be like the world's leading terrorist. And uh, but of course, if you have the opportunity to interview even Osama bin Laden, you take that interview. Mm -hmm. But you challenge him. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll so we'll see how the interview rolls out, and I think that will will determine whether you know what we can say about the decision. And Tucker said in that video he secured an agreement from Elon Musk and X to air the video in full, the interview in full, which, of course, we still don't have the interview. Uh, we're waiting for it to be released. But that's interesting, too, because Musk has actually cooperated with Starlink in Ukraine um, in the past. And if Tucker airs, which is, again, this is we've talked about this many times. It's, it's crazy that Elon Musk is in this position of like immense geopolitical military power uh, as essentially an unelected you know, member of the business community. If Tucker airs an interview that's uh, overly flattering to Putin, a lot of people were mentioning that he cut those comments of Kanye West uh, going into like anti-Semitic conspiratorial territory mm. from the interview he did with Kanye, asking if Kanye sounded crazy, uh, and then then rolling, you know, cutting ostensibly cutting what made Kanye sound absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, if he does something similar with with Putin. Um, Perhaps that can add friction to his relationship with Elon Musk if Elon Musk is forced to basically uh, allow uh, an interview that you know, he thinks is uncomfortable or needs a community note or something like that. I don't know if they have any agreements about that, but Tucker's business does really rely on X. Uh, he, it's called Tucker on X. Mm -hmm. The show is called Tucker on X. So uh, yeah, there, there are legitimate business interests for Tucker to balance in, in doing a good job with this interview. I agree that the pressure is, is so high that to be overly flat. Uh, to be fair, the media is going to say that this interview is overly flattering no matter what. Tucker could do a great job. Tucker could be Christian Amanpour uh, and handle the interview the exact same way as she would uh, from even sort of a blobby you know, foreign policy establishment type way. And the media would pull out any different clips and say that this was reckless and, and Tucker was sucking up to Putin, et cetera, et cetera. So e even if the interview like veers into territory that it shouldn't a couple of times, it was going to happen no matter what. Tucker knows it's going to happen no matter what what. Uh, Tucker says most Americans don't understand why Putin invaded Ukraine. Ryan, I think that's true in the effort to expose that, though. Um, I, he, he does have to be careful. Right. And, and we're not going to get an answer to why Russia invaded Ukraine. We're going to get uh, Putin's explanation yeah. and propaganda for yeah, why he invaded Ukraine, yeah. which is fine. Like, we want to hear what propaganda all different sides are, are putting out and sort through it. Like, Right. Oh. And there is a, it, it is true that the media has basically given no airtime to Putin's propaganda so that what Tucker is saying in, in that video is basically Americans don't even understand um, what, you know, the their billions of dollars are fighting or, or are fighting from Putin's yeah. perspective, like what it's, you know, and I actually think that's perfectly reasonable because, um, you know, that's it's war. It's, again, billions of dollars. And, uh, you know, there's there's so little coverage of that in the media. People are smart enough to, defi to decide from themselves. They don't need the government to protect them from lies from 
foreign leaders. The foreign leaders lie all the time. <laughs> like people can figure it out themselves. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.